Everyone has fallen for a scam at some point. It's pretty much a learning experience that teaches you to be more diligent when something seems too good to be true. But you didn't get scammed clicking on this video because today we're going to take a look at the Internet Scams Iceberg, where we'll look into many scams that occur in our vast ocean that is the online web. This iceberg even features percentages on entries that show how likely these scams are to occur in your everyday internet user. If you got any scams that weren't on this iceberg, it's a pretty small one, make sure to comment down below and like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more. So without a further ado, let's get into the iceberg. And to start our iceberg off, we have Rick Rolling. It's okay. We've all been rickrolled at some point. Even though rickrolling isn't a scam in the way you think a scam is, it still kind of is, as instead of a big story or an exciting announcement you see, once you click that link, all you're met with are the first notes of Rick Astley's never gonna give you up as your expression turns neutral and, and the embarrassment of being fooled sinks in. Even if there's no financial loss or damage to your system, you have been rickrolled, and there's nothing you can do about it. All you can do is move on with yourself and live each day as if it never happened. Microsoft is the largest tech company in the world, and along with it are an army of scammers who imitate Microsoft's appearance in order to trick people into scamming them. Messages will pop up that seem like legit error messages or Windows Defender notifications, and if you don't pay close enough attention to these messages, you may fall victim for their trick. These scams are often used to steal information, money, or install viruses onto your computer that can harm your system. Often, fake messages will include phone numbers, like legit error messages will never include, pretending to be tech support, and will offer payments to subscriptions to fix whatever is wrong with your system. You might even receive random texts, phone calls, or emails pretending to be Microsoft contacting you about something like an extended warranty. And although it's easy to see through this scam, older, less tech-savvy people may fall victim to it way too often. These pop-ups can be pretty common on unsec unsecured websites, so make sure to be cautious when browsing the web. Save the Kids was a huge crypto scam from 2021 that had some of YouTube's largest names connected to it. The coin was promoted as a cryptocurrency that would give a percentage of the coin's wealth towards charity. The coin would be promoted by huge creators like Ricegum, Summer Ray, and formerly Faze K, Tico, Nikon, and Jarvis to a huge audience of people who would donate to the project in droves when the coin dropped on June 5th, 2021 at a price of two cents per coin. There would be an anti-whaling mechanism where large owners of the coin could not could only sell about 20% and some reports saying 1% a day in an attempt to prevent a pump and dump scheme. Unfortunately, this was a pump and dump scheme and one of the largest influencer scams of all time. You see, the anti-whale piracy would be revoked so that the whales could pull out all their holdings instantly. The notorious boogeyman to all scammers, CoffeeZilla, would launch an investigation into Save the Kids and would find the ringleaders of this scam. And they were FaZe K, his manager Jordan Gallen, and YouTube supervillain Sam Pepper, who is probably best well known for that one kidnapping prank back in the day, but this dude pops up way too much. Everyone connected to the coin received large-scale criticism, and all FaZe members involved were banned following the aftermath. Save the Kids is one of the largest influencer crypto schemes and a classic example of a pump-and-dump that abused people's goodwill towards charity and would use it to line the pockets of already rich influencers. We touched on it earlier in the Microsoft section, but a common scam is to imitate a tech support message of a trusted company, person, or sometimes a federal agency. They will often send a message telling you that you need to take action for something, and all you have to do is give them some personal information or maybe some payment info and whatever problem you had will disappear. Usually you could tell that these are fake and by the predatory wording used in the message, and more obviously the email addresses or 
phone information not lining up with any legit hex support accounts. But often they will m mess stuff up like placing O's with zeros, stuff like that. So always keep an eye on that. But sometimes they'll even abuse exploits to make it look legit enough to fool less tech savvy people. So always be careful and don't open every text message you get. Stratton Oakmont was an over-the-counter brokerage house, which is a business that sells and purchases securities such as stocks and bonds from companies directly and are not listed on formal exchanges such as the NASDAQ. The firm was founded by Jordan Belfort, Danny Parush, and Brian Blake in 1989 and would rapidly skyrocket into the largest over-the-counter firm in the United States. And the way they did this was extremely illegal, performing pump and dump schemes where they would mislead investors into investing into stocks only to pull out their share of the stocks when the value peaked, such as Save the Kids, along with maintaining stock prices by sitting on stocks and not processing orders to sell them. And these practices wouldn't go undetected with the National Association of Security Dealers bar barring the firm from doing business and forcing the firm to shut down in 1996. Belfort and Perush would be locked up for money laundering and securities fraud, but since they were cooperative with authorities and definitely not because they had friends in high places of society, they would get reduced sentences. And if this story seems a little familiar, Belfort would write his autobiography, The Wolf of Wall Street, that would be adapted into a cult classic film starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jonah Hill. And starting up tier two of the iceberg, we have the good old Nigerian Prince scam. The classic Nigerian Prince scam is a classic example of a ridiculous concept for a scam working far more often than you may think it should. The phishing scam starts with the victim receiving an email by a person who claims to be a Nigerian prince, sometimes being related to the victim, who asks for some money and able to pay a fee or for something, promising a large amount of money in return. This scam is an old one, and although it is so preposterous, as of 2019, Americans lost over $700,000 to this scam proving that scams are dangerous even if they seem outrageous. You Don't Know Who I Am and YouAreAnIdiot.com is an old internet web page that is used to install a Trojan, known by the same name as well as its official name, Office, onto your computer. The Trojan originated on an adult web page in 2002 until later showing up on YouDon'tKnowWhoIAm.org. Once on the web page, a full screen video will feature a flashing GIF with You Are an Idiot written over three smiley faces, with a loud, annoying song saying the same thing. If you try to leave the page, six smaller, identical windows will bounce around your screen, and if you manage to close one, six more windows will appear in its place. And if you try to Alt F4, X windows will call you an idiot for trying. And since this is 2002 and Fortnite wasn't even invented yet, these windows would eventually hog all your computer's resources, forcing you to shut down your computer manually. Some more malicious versions of the virus would exist, and they would even activate upon starting up your system. But in a strange twist, this virus would become a meme, with youreanidiot.com being made with a less harmful version of the virus to kind of fool your friends with. This Trojan has affected as many as 100,000 computers, with some setups being rendered unusable and leaving some users to panic wipe all of their files from the system. But the initial virus wasn't that harmful, all, and especially on Windows XP because there were more features that could deal with it. But... This was a pretty classic internet virus from back in the day. Giveaway scams are a constant when it comes to the internet. No matter where you are, be it YouTube, TikTok, or Twitter, ads purchased by scammers and people under people's posts in the comment sections will often promote fake giveaways. Some creators will even fake giveaways on their main channels to get more likes or followers at best 
while some giveaway scams will ask for information like your address. No matter how many posts you like, you're never going to get that free PS2. In the same vein as giveaway scams, many people run scams around in-game currency like RuneScape, Gold, V-Bucks, or Robux, both on and off platforms. Many players will say they can double your in-game currency by using hacks, and all you need to do is fork over what you want doubled, just to run off and leave you empty-handed and dumb-looking. Other scams will promote fake giveaways to create artificial engagement, while some sites will pop up claiming to generate currency or to provide better prices than those in-game. These scams only really work on kids, but everyone has done something dumb in the pursuit of unlimited V-Bucks, but in the end of the day, only you can prevent V-Buck scams. Amazon is a massive company, and with it are several impersonator scams that claim the information of people who don't pay close enough attention. You may get a text message saying that the payment method couldn't be processed and that you have to request an update over text or by a sketchy link that isn't connected to your actual Amazon page. Some sellers on Amazon may even scam people out of products by sending bootlegs or sometimes nothing at all. In cases like that, it's best to contact Amazon whenever these pop up. But make sure to always check through your actual Amazon account and not sketchy emails or texts. Like, I don't even think they do text you if your stuff goes out there. So it's really to target old people. So old people out there, please be more diligent. And starting tier three of the iceberg, we have Oaxis Entertainment. No Access Entertainment is a proposed streaming service created by none other than Butch Hartman, the creator of Family Odd Parents, who is a damn rabbit hole in his own right. The streaming service was advertised on Kickstart and would host family friendly content, but left out crucial information about the service, mainly the fact that it would be focused around Christian content and strange backer rewards that seemingly went against the terms of service of the site. A large last-second donation would meet the goal for the service. However, several years later and nothing has been released around the platform outside of a trailer for a service that funders will never really see. Many Discord users want nothing more than that sweet, sweet Discord Nitro, when a gym membership would probably be far more fitting. Nitro scams ask you to download code generators and will just straight up ask you for money in some cases in exchange for cheaper nitro and getting scammed out of nitro is pretty goofy like all you get is some emojis and larger upload sizes at best but whatever makes you look swag in the group chat i guess go get him kitten many social media accounts mainly on facebook tumblr and instagram have been hacked promoting a sale on ray-ban sunglasses Many untech-savvy friends seeing their friends promote sunglasses at 90% off might check out the sale, and I mean, hell, it might be an affiliate link. So, it might even help out your friend, only to have their accounts hacked by clicking on the link. And once hacked, these accounts will in turn promote this one-day sale as well. Spreading is kind of like a, a virus, you know, like yeah, everyone's eventually going to be selling sunglasses to each other. And to start tier four of the iceberg, we have Goggle.com. Of course, we all know what Google is, but back in 2006, a typo as easy as replacing the O with an extra G could destroy your entire system. The site would exist undocumented for several years before 2006, but we do know about the site from reports back in the day. Goggle contained a multitude of malware programs on the site that would download onto the host computer upon reaching the page while distracting the host with pop-ups. This was largely possible due to an exploit regarding a file type known as Windows Metafiles or WMF. These files are sort of image files that would run commands upon being open, but at the time on Windows XP, there was an exploit that allowed these files to run any command that a hacker would want. 
The exploit only existed in Windows XP prior to a security patch, meaning that if you're on Windows Vista or even Windows 98, you'd be far safer than a Windows XP user, and XP users were pretty damn cooked when opening the site. And the pop-ups, if you tried to close them as well, would download a spyware onto your system that would completely shut your system down and basically only allow you to look at that thing's page. Google would take legal action against Goggle, but in a rare instance, Google would actually lose the case, as Goggle is an actual word and not just a typo of Google. Goggle would eventually cross hands between several owners, becoming several different websites that didn't contain malware, eventually becoming a political website. So instead of being a computer virus, now they are a mind virus. The woke mind virus. Fonzie Buddy was a spyware program that disguised itself as a friendly virtual assistant monkey. Fonzie Buddy would be created by Bonzi Software, initially reusing a Microsoft Web Assistant icon, but choosing to go with the purple gorilla that we are familiar with today. Bonzi Buddy would help keep your information organized and read text out loud for you, all for free, as sort of a secretary. How could you not trust a friendly purple monkey? I mean, he even does tricks for you. Well, Behind this friendly demeanor is an agent with the purpose of getting as much information out of you as possible and sending it to Bonzi software servers without user consent. Bonzi Buddy would also create fake error messages in an attempt to get the user to purchase Bonzi softwares. Bonzi software would close its doors in 2004, 20 years ago, and with it basically killing Bonzi Buddy in the process. Bonzi Buddy would become a bit of a meme in coming years though with users using it on older versions of windows and it would even see a resurgence and since bonzi software closed its doors bonzi buddy isn't really a risk to your data only doing what the pro program advertised to be purple internet monkey pal who just wants to help you out with your computer and down to the depths of the final entry of the iceberg, we have IPS. IPS is a scam that often imitates UPS or sometimes the actual international package shipping company with the purpose of exploiting people who are anticipating their packages coming in. These scams often revolve around text claiming that the target's package had been delayed or canceled and that you just need to send them your personal information and all wrongs will be righted. Phishing scams like this occur pretty often, but if you pay even a modicum of information, you can call this bullshit from a mile away. And that is going to do it for the Internet Scams Iceberg. And I knew this was a pretty quick one, but there were some pretty interesting entries on here. So I kind of wanted to just do this to get a quick one out with some interesting stories that you may not have known about. I learned a couple things on this mainly the, the the even more butch hartman shit which yeah guy has a lot going on uh but yeah i just decided to get a quick one out for y'all nice little iceberg uh let me know if you like short iceberg content like this like really small icebergs this was a a, a pretty quick one to research not much to really talk about in that regard but yeah decided to just get that out there for you I know this is somewhat of an unfinished iceberg, but it, it like hasn't been updated in years, so I don't think people are going to come back to finish it. So if you have any uh, scams or viruses or any of that, like, like scam type things, go ahead and comment them down below. You know, if you wanted to spread information about a scam that, you know, has affected you that maybe you feel should be represented, go ahead and comment them down below. And with that, I'll be heading out. So make sure to like the video if you liked it. Comment down below any any suggestions for future uploads or whatever. And subscribe to the channel. It doesn't hurt. It only helps. And that's not a scam. You, you get exactly what is promised out of subscriptions. You get more videos and notifications and all of that. It's, I'm not a scammer at all, dude. I'm just a dude making YouTube videos. You can't be scammed subscribing. Subscribe, dude. But yeah, with that, I'll be heading out. So see ya.
all.